I think that if you have a roof over your your head, that everybody should do it. At least once, try it out. You never know what you're gonna encounter, but you also don't know what you're missing. Anna is a foster mother who opened not only the doors of her home, but also her heart to two sisters who suffered abuse and entered the foster care program in search of support and a safe home. In Georgia, almost 11,000 children are currently in the foster care program and the number continues to increase. A foster parent is someone that watches the, the children, they're in your care, while the case gets resolved. Children who are referred by the government to the foster care program often have faced difficult and traumatic experiences, which is why they must be temporarily, or in some cases, permanently separated from their parents. There's different reasons. Um, our priority is safety, uh, the safety of a child. If we feel we have enough evidence, you know, we've been out to a home, um, or we know the situation and that child is not safe in their home, then we will intervene. Um, and they might not be safe for a number of reasons. You know, if the parents are using drugs, if they're being negligent, um, if they're just not supervising a child, if the parents have mental health issues or medical issues and cannot properly care for the child, then we would step in. When, you know, part of the paperwork that you fill out is like a very intense uh, questionnaire, it's very detailed, and so they ask you for, you know, like, would you be willing to take a blind child or someone that has diabetes or physically abused, mentally abused? So you can check all the questions that you're willing to, to accept, you know, race, age, it's very detailed. And then when they have children that meet that category, they call you and they tell you, this is what we have. They give you a little explanation of why they're in foster care, and then you decide if you want to take them or not. Um, the biggest issue I, I, we see right now is that we don't have enough foster homes um, within the, the Latino community. Uh, we have some foster homes, not enough. I don't know that we'll ever have enough foster homes for our foster children, um, but we don't have what we need. We will definitely need a lot more Hispanic homes. In addition to Spanish language support, the Georgia Division of Family and Children's Services provides a variety of resources that include financial assistance, counseling, education programs, and training to help families manage the issues that led to their children being placed in state custody. Um, sometimes, as soon as a mother gives birth, we're at the hospital, ready to take custody um, for certain reasons. Uh, we have children of all ages. I mean, literally every age group um, we've seen here. With DFACS, we have children as old as 17 years old. Um, we also have children who were in foster care throughout their teen years and decided to voluntarily stay in foster care. And they can do that up until the age of 21. The state of Georgia is facing a shortage of foster parents, which means that many children are placed in group homes or other temporary housing. This can be a difficult experience for children who often feel isolated and alone. Take things out, she's almost like a bottle that you put a cork and she doesn't really want to talk. She doesn't really know what her emotions are. So I've, le I've learned to deal with that, you know, like asking a lot of questions. Obviously you have to get mad just like you do at your own kid, but you have to be very tactful. If a child, you know, is Spanish speaking only and we place them in a white home, they're not gonna know how to um, talk with each other, speak with each other, um, you know, communicate in any way. And we know with every different race, I mean, everybody has their own cultures, their own um, just way of living. And so they're already experiencing a lot of trauma from being removed from their, their family. And we would like for more Hispanics to open up their home you know, and help us in these situations. The division also focuses on the reunification efforts, working to reunite children with their biological families whenever possible. I would tell those biological parents to not give up. I would tell them to seek for help. If they're going through a certain season of their lives, I would tell them to um, reach out to someone to let them know that they just need an extra set of hands or, you know, just extra support to keep 
this from happening, to keep their kids from coming into foster care. The division works closely with foster parents, providing them with training and support to help them care for children in their homes. It also provides psychological support as the bond between foster parents and children often becomes very strong. And of course, I want the girls to know that when they move on to another family, it's not because they did anything wrong. Anna was willing to provide the love and care these little sisters needed to heal, and she has become a vital part of their lives. I think the most rewarding is to see them thrive, uh, to see them grow and mature, and that we have opened their eyes to make sure they have a better life than what they have before. If you or someone you know is interested in becoming a foster parent, please contact your state's Division of Family and Children's Services. Although the system is working to improve, it also needs our support to change the lives of many children who deserve a more dignified life. I'm Paola Camacho for MundoNow.com.